Johnny Cash. I've been everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. I've been at Walmart and Costco. <laughs> strip mall, strip mall, it's all the same shit. I've even been at Dwayne Reed. You know what I mean? I've been everywhere. <laughs> I'll tell you something. You must be bonkers to want to go and live in Yonkers. Inside joke. <laughs> Why, Willy Wonka, when he lost his conkers. And who would want to move to Staten? Nobody? No. <laughs> but there's just no room left in Manhattan. Not even enough to swing a cat in. And don't even start about the Bronx, the whole place honks. But that's not true. Although, they do have a zoo. And the traffic too, which is static, just like you. <laughs> That's enough of that Johnny Cooper clan nonsense. <laughs> or is it? I went three on one at Ace King's Pizza and got handed my ass in a blizzard of fists. All I asked for was olives. They gave me capers with a young book, Prince, who placed his ring upon my crown and his belly in my face and the staff shouted police and then please no more there's tomato all over the black and checker floor tiles and I was trying to chuckle but I couldn't because he was so angry with my head and with the idiot within it so I gave in I give in to everything they all have me again for there is never only one but a multitude, a legion that wills against mine. And what am I? A fantasist? A fiery ball? A fall guy? A fool? And should I give in when hope is a god? As contagious as Jesus? As rampant as Muhammad? And other prophets from nothing that prosper in the desert of our ever-shrinking dreams? Thank you. I'm going to do, I'm going to read some poems that are about the reason that I'm here. Not here, but here. Not here, but in New York. Not, not, not on the planet. God, Jesus, that'd be terrible. Right. They're, they're kind of love poems. So, Gordon, these are for you, Gordon Gilbert. <laughs> Her hair crumbles like applesauce in autumn. Her breath smells as felt. She sucks up my senses. I'm a tactile dyslexic, like fingering fish that is smelt. Her laughter is conical, her body atonal. She beckons me like a sphere. I'm an ophthalmic moron, an aural goofball, whenever she is near me. I hear sponges and mushrooms and loud zesty lemons. I see colors that want to exist. I am debent and springish and panache and lust pelt amongst other intangible things. And what do I do now that I'm twisted? Rearrange myself. I could chop off my hands with a circular saw and stick eyeballs on my wrist stumps, shove a trumpet down my esophagus, hop some ears on top of my knees, stuff my tongue where it is tasteless and cause my testicles to sneeze. <laughs> Or distance myself, I could touch nothing at all, curl myself into a ball inside a swaddle of cotton wool, deprive myself in a tank, like the altered state of William Hurt. But it might. It could be senseless. Thank you. <laughs> I look at the back of your head and win hair in front of the trees on a sunny day in Brooklyn and you say it's greasy today I haven't washed it we eat shrimp that sweats with wine white in iced packs of plastic and you talk into your phone and enjoy a day out at last on grass then we cycle back on the thoughtless track that New Jack's built to sweeten your flat apartment 
and hours of loaf in the face of days without it. This bird visited in my 38th year. I heard from this window tunes of freedom. Abandoned to the world as she was, in the dawn and the dusk, she would always appear on the same branch, perched and unfussed, singing lustily, thrusting out song to my ear. For two years she came to a sick cell's outlook, and I'm sure others shared in the pleasure I took, for she didn't care who heard her, no neighbor, no jailer, she was fearless. And then one full starred night she appeared silent, her throat dry, or her talent spent, or her needs requited. I sat in my room, holding the moon between finger and thumb for only a moment. All right, thank you. So uh, I started writing these postcards from New Yorkshire for my family back home. Uh, I, don't know, I had fun with them. And, uh, I made a little chat book and here are a couple. The Lower East Side is grand. There was a guy on the bench with his arse and balls hanging out. It was an anatomical cacophony. I have to step over rivulets of piss and puke. But not every morning. It's just like home, you would love it. <laughs> The bar on Avenue B looked suitably dirty. It was dark and the windows gave no hint as to what went on inside. I needed some place quiet to finish the thoughts I had been carrying. There should have been sawdust on the floor like the Yates's of years ago. A few bearded men sat at the bar nibbling on their nuts. It was a trick they learnt early. I ordered a stout and watched the menu and looked at the TV screen. Two ultimate fighters got bloody on the canvas. It was obscene. The pizzas were dairy-free and the gravy was vegan. They have landed a few punches, a righteous hook here and there, the cheeseless amongst us. <laughs> we were crossing at the corner of First Avenue and 14th Street. The swirling weekly wind made its appearance and snatched the youth's change from his hand as he exited the hot and crusty pizza place. Regardless of traffic or the lack of a little white man, this dude ran into the street after Washington and we all watched his progress to the gutter. With the help of the water collected there, he stamped his authority upon George's face. Boy, you chased that dollar down, a wise old woman said, as the orderly ones amongst us caught up to his fist pumping joy in this land of opportunity. <laughs> If you need translations, you can come and see me later, but I was just thinking that uh, it might not help, because I thought Downtown Abbey was a program about inner city monks. <laughs> <laughs> or lesbian nuns, you know. <laughs> Downtown Abbess. <laughs> so this is a little story. We parked on Washington Street and Fifth. I just went for the first available spot. The last two days of driving around in circles waiting for an alternative road swept space had me all preemptive. I got out of the car and got the baby out. She was sleeping and sweaty. It was 95 degrees and we were on the shady side of the day. Still, here we were in Hoboken looking for the Elysian field of legend. It's not true that you have to die first. It's here, or at least part of it is. It seems to be recently that as I walk the streets pushing the baby about, we are open to suggestion, available for comment, suckers for advice. I don't know whether it's this city and its people specifically, but I don't remember it happening before. Hey mister, fix her neck. Oh. Hey mister, her hat is slipping. Hey mister, you should cover her legs, put something on her feet. Hey, your blanket is twisted. They shout at me from across streets and from their windows, assuming I am a new father in need of assistance. I don't ask for it, or I ask for it, just by the way I walk. <laughs> it gets so that it makes me testy, and I tell all these busy old people to fuck under my breath, because it does all come from those of a certain age, and they know best. Then today, as we cross Frank Sinatra Boulevard in search of some history, 
I hear a smoky female voice berating me for something I can't quite catch. I see her then on the opposite side of the street, all bent, not need, wearing yellow, she's like an old banana. <laughs> I check my baby quickly as we walk towards her and can see nothing wrong, nothing I should have done, the baby's head is still on her shoulders. But the woman shouts something, the traffic drowns out her voice. When I am getting near, she has a hand out, open palm upward, with one long finger twig pointing at us. I avoid eye contact, yet I am ready to snap at her with some choice cursing if she so much as dares to undermine my parenting. <laughs> but what she says as we reach the curb is, and you've got nice socks on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have got socks on. It is true, they are not nice though. I don't understand what she means. I could try to, but it would be guesswork, and I am busy searching for something else, and it's not all about her. <laughs> so I just saw something autumnal to leave you with. Uh, I don't know if you know what that means, it's fall. Autumnal? <laughs> autumn. autumn. Yeah, Phil, you never heard of that? Yeah. Not in this neighborhood. No. <laughs> Autumn. <laughs> so, the East River is playing footsie with a low September sun, and nodding Chinese fishermen avoid joggers by the ton. New Balance is behind us, I guess their race is run. Mercury must be in Gatorade, for I'm having double vision. Scenes not born yesterday once locked inside my prison. I threw away historic keys, yet seasons shift all memory. Your cold voice calls at four in the morning. Through the gap I had left the night's stale breath. Before sun or ghouls, elemental calls, you drunkenly whisper of death. And take me with you this rotten harvest. Bury us deep, slow the blood in our chests. We shall sleep till spring leans its leaves to the wind, green in our dreams free of care.